Hi, it's Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have a home office in Milwaukee. And I'm out here in my forest today with you to show off this lungwort. We're going to make a tincture out of it and a tea and talk about its medicinal uses. This is a uh, Lobaria pulmonaria. It also has an old Latin name, Sticta pulmonaria. Some people call it lung moss or oak lung. And this is just a really nice respiratory herb. And uh, let's see if we can find some. Okay, let's find some of this lungwort lichen. Um, basically, it's back there behind me. There it is, way up in the tree. Uh, not the easiest thing to get to most of the time because it's way up in a tree here's another tree you can see it's way up there up there way up there that's where it's at so the time to get it then in my opinion is uh, after a nice storm when those trees have fallen down Let's see if we can find a fallen tree. Oh, there's one right over there. This tree decided to just topple down. We've been moving bits of it out, but uh, here is where you harvest your lungwort lichen. Off the ground, off the trees that come down. Often it'll also just fall loose onto the ground. You'll just see a piece just sitting there on a trail often like that. Those are perfectly legit. This is a great place to collect lungwort lichen. And basically just grab that little lichen. You can see if you turn it over, it's kind of got a little root there. You'll wanna kinda take the dirty parts off eventually, wash those off, but otherwise, it's a real nice crop of lungwort lichen right over here. Now here's something interesting. Lungwort is actually a composite organism. It's a symbiosis involving three kingdoms of organisms, including an Ascomycete fungus, a green algae, and a cyanobacterium. These little orange things, they're actually the fruiting bodies, and they're called apothecia, and they're the sexual bodies of this. Now lungwort can be found on a number of trees throughout the U.S. and Europe, especially old growth mountain um, areas. They really like to be up in oaks, but they do find themselves in both conifers and hardwood trees, and sometimes even rocks. Now one thing to really consider is it takes 5 to 30 years to grow a decent batch of lungwort lichen. So you need to harvest this responsibly, preferably from down limbs after storms. These lichens are very sensitive to environmental pollution, devastation, wildfires, and acid rain. And populations have been in decline in Europe, which is sad. This one looks pretty good. This one down here seems okay. It's not the prettiest stuff. But you'll love what it does once you get it home. And let's pick that guy up. There's a nice handful of lungwort lichen. And here we are back in my kitchen. And we're going to make a tincture and a tea out of this lungwort. But first we're going to have to clean it up. And while I'm here, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about how to identify lungwort. Now, lungwort is a green leafy lichen with a wide wavy thallus, which is divided and kind of appears chopped off at the ends, like it was just ripply, ripped up or something, but that's just the way it looks. Now, um, the underside is kind of a lighter color. You can see it's got these little attachment points where it, it clings to the tree. Um, those are pretty dirty, so 
when washing it, we just try to get off all that little bits down the bottom. It often has other bits of moss touching it too. So we're just going to go through and clean these up, um, taking off all the icky looking parts, keeping the nice good stuff. Woo! And here I go. Okay. Now, the whole plant is what you're using when you use the lichen. Um, you can take this as a tincture or a tea, usually. And uh, it's generally considered a remedy for coughs, and especially if there's also muscle pain in the chest, shoulders, and back, or up the back of the neck to the occiput area. Um, and these are especially considered for dry... Um, let me see, dry wheezing, raspy coughs, um, also things like bronchitis or laryngitis. Um, it also has been used uh, for asthma to reduce the symptoms and potentially reduce the frequency of attacks. And it's used often for chronic nasal drip, hay fever, summer flus. Um, it can be acute or chronic, but the thing is that it's an irritable hacking cough and that it overexerts the muscles and that overexertion of those muscles leads to chest soreness and you can have dull pain in the chest when you take a breath or sharp quick pains when you cough so this is often also useful in formulas for conditions that have hot watery irritating mucus or sinus tension such as heavy pressure in the forehead um, frequent sneezing and irritated just generally irritated conjunctiva uh, this has also been used for other pain conditions in the chest and back locations, such as rheumatism in the shoulders, chest or spine, or body pains during a really bad flu. Um, this might even help relieve headaches located at the back of the neck in the occiput area. Uh, so other traditions have, been, have used this for urinary incontinence, incontinence eczema, and even wound healing. Okay, so right here I'm just chopping up the lungwort so I can put it into a jar to make a tincture with. So chopped it up nicely, putting it in the jar, and now I'm going to add some of this 80 proof vodka over here. Oh, eventually, <laughs> once I get done chopping, chop, 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 more chopping. Okay, that's looking nice. Okay, we're getting all those little bits in there. Want to get it nice and full. Fill your jar all the way up to the top. Look at those. That, uh, just little chunks will make it easy to extract the medicinal compounds. We're adding an 80 proof vodka in here. Go ahead and pour that all the way up to the top. And make sure you wipe the edge off before you put the lid on. You don't want anything interfering with the seal or oozing out the side. Go ahead and cap that and that's your tincture. Um, it'd be best if you'd shift that every day for about a month, maybe two and then you can extract that out, remove the liquid, and you'll have a, a tincture that's good to go for future use. It's a really great way of preserving. Okay, now I'm going to show you a respiratory formula. This would be good for, say, a bronchitis or a laryngitis, something with a dry hacking cough. And we're going to use the lungwort lichen we've just harvested, some fennel seeds here, a bit of rosemary, um, some usnea lichen over there, and a bit of mullein leaf, some dried mullein leaf. I'm going to sweeten that with a bit of monk fruit. And uh, we're going to take these and we're going to place them in the boiling pot. Fortunately, we don't have to watch that. I've got it pre boiled. And go ahead and chop up your little leaves, your little arms of lungwort into the pot. 
Now the main actions of lungwort lichen are as an expectorant, astringent, an antimicrobial, uh, anti-inflammatory, and an antioxidant. And it's a pulmonary demulcent that kind of moistens and um, the lungs while kind of removing some of that annoying thick mucus that might be messing with you and causing a tickly irritative cough. Now I'm just going to add all those into the pot while it's boiling. I'm going to stir that all up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to let that simmer for a little while on a much lower temperature. The lid on. Give that a good, oh, say, 10 15 minutes in the lowest setting you can get it down to. And okay, that's been stewing there for a little while now. Oh, look at that, nice and steamy. So I'm going to take advantage of that steam and do a steam inhalation with this tea. The rosemary is really great for a a bronchitis or a laryngitis. Also, the other constituents will come out, volatilize, and go up directly into your sinus passages and into your lungs, right through your nose. Okay, now we're just going to take and sieve that out, get out all the chunks. We've got a, a little funnel that's got a little sieve in the bottom there, and we're just removing all the leaf matter so it can have a nice tasty cup of tea. Now this is a nice respiratory tea formula, and you'll really feel some good effects in your lungs when you drink this tea. It's a uh, Maybe not the most delicious tea. It's a bit earthy, um, definitely quite the rosemary flavor, very strong. But the rosemary does create a very aromatic scent. You definitely want to breathe all that in. It's good. And there you have it, a respiratory tea and a tincture with lungwort. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.